I started at the college in 1987. Okay. April, I think it was. I think it was the month of April, 1987. How do you remember it, it was April? Uh, I, because I came at the end of the legislative session, okay. and the session was over in March, so okay. that's why it's so easy to remember. Okay. And what was your background before coming to the college? I worked as the uh, higher education analyst for the state legislature. And how long did you do that? I did that for a number of years. I think a total of about 17, 18 years in that capacity. And do you have a uh, private sector experience? Yes, I have owned my own business. Uh, uh, I also served as a business vice president or financial vice president for a computer company at one time. But most of my private uh, experiences uh, uh, is in my own business, with my own business. And what type of business was it? It was an appliance business and, uh, and a, uh, a contract brokerage business. I bought and sold uh, contracts, oh. uh, mortgages, huh. home loans, uh, home improvement loans, uh, first mortgages, this type of thing. I see. Okay. Um, now, is this running now? Is it? Mm, we have bars. We're just starting to roll. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Audio is fine. Okay, that was our audio check. Um, I'm going to go out and look on the monitor. If I think we need to adjust something, I'll break in. And so we may have to do the first question over again. Okay, and just like that, only you'll be talking to Kent instead of me. Okay. All right. Have fun. Uh, yeah, forget about us. Just relax. This is fun. I love doing this. Because I learned so much about the college. I really do. There are things I've never known before until we've talked to some, some people. Can't have more fun than this. Okay. Okay, you, you get, you get it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you need to frame up. Give him a little oh, frame. Oh, yeah. I'll get started. Okay. That's good. All right, I'm going to close the door. Uh, whenever you're ready. Oh, do you want to go back over these first questions, or sure. background type things? Well, that's kind of your first question here. When were you first asked? Well, that's interim president. When did I first come to college? That's yeah, that's if we, Let's start there. Pick that one up. Uh, what background brought you to the college as business vice president? I served as the uh, uh, higher education analyst for the state legislature for a number of years and uh, in that capacity became very acquainted with the financial affairs of each of the colleges and universities in the state of Utah. I worked with them very closely over the years, uh, almost spending as much time on, on campuses as I was spending really in my office at the state capitol. And as a result of that uh, came a, a, an in-depth understanding as to the financial operations of a, of a college or a university. When were you first asked to serve as SLCC's interim president? As I recall, uh, uh, President Orville Cornahan, who was serving as president, called me into his office, I think it was in March of 1990. Uh, 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 and told me that he was going to uh, retire uh, and that his retirement would become effective on June 30th of that same year. Uh, but he also told me that uh, uh, most of the decisions between March and June 30th, uh, uh, he would uh, uh, refer them to me. Uh, we would talk over some of the issues that had to be resolved together but that he was desirous, even at that time, to be less active as, as the president, uh, even though he would still fundamentally be the president until June 30th. A few days after that, the Commissioner of Higher Education, Commissioner Kerr, called me and asked me if I would serve as interim president. Uh, I acknowledged to him that if that was the desire of his office, I would. Uh, then if about a week or two later than after that, I received a call from the chairman of the Board of Regents 
asking me that, that if I would serve as the interim president. And if I was willing to do so, they would like to appoint me at their upcoming Board of Regents meeting as the interim president. So that occurred between March and, and June, those activities that I just mentioned. What did you consider the most important role of an interim president? Well, an interim president is, a, is placed in a unique position. He knows he's interim. He knows he's temporary. But he also carries the responsibility of keeping the activities and the functions of the campus going, moving forward, functioning properly. Uh, the biggest challenge here at Solid Community College was that the college was under a, a tremendous growth mode. Uh, we were growing rapidly. Uh, uh, there were indications that we were going to continue to grow rapidly. And I wanted to make sure that uh, everything that happened at the college during that interim period would be conducive to handle that kind of growth so that the college was not uh, uh, held back or, or failed in its mission to meet the responsibilities it has to the community. That to me was the greatest responsibility I had as an interim president was to, to plan and continue to plan for the growth the college was undergoing. How did the did uh, that enrollment materialize, and, and if so, how did the college cope with that time, kind of growth? It did materialize. It even materialized uh, to a greater extent than we had anticipated. During the year of 1990, we had just entered into a, a, a phenomenal growth year, and uh, the college was underfunded financially for that growth, and we were struggling to handle the number of students we had on campus. Uh, given the limitation of funding uh, by the state legislature during that uh, uh, previous legislative session. The forecast indicated to us that even the next year, the year 1991-92, was going to even be a greater growth year than the previous year. And as you, as, as you know, budgets are built, budget requests are built in the summer and in the fall of the previous request year and so we spent much of our time planning for that growth and and putting a budget request together that would be forwarded to the Board of Regents onto the governor's office onto the office of the legislative analyst that it would allow us to continue that growth many of our analysts indicated to us that our growth would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 percent uh, as we put our budget request together we indicated that kind of growth to this to the Board of Regents. They were very supportive of us. We were very successful in that budget hearing at the time uh, with the with the State Board of Regents, and we came out of uh, that budget hearing with the Regents with their support of requesting some six million dollars, nearly six million dollars, to handle our anticipated enrollment growth. That was a major accomplishment. We then took that request on to the governor's office and on to the Office of the Legislative Analyst, and they too became supportive of our growth request. So we entered that session in January of 1991 uh, uh, with a six million dollar request for growth. This ended up being a very successful budget year for us, almost uh, uh, unbelievable to us because at the end of the session the legislature awarded us almost five million dollars for growth. Uh, uh, the biggest uh, uh, allotment of, for growth money we'd ever received from the state legislature. This is an indication of how rapidly the college was growing. But this allowed the college to establish a base, a financial base, that could handle the growth. And that was significant for the college to accomplish that. And it was accomplished and we felt good about that one single accomplishment. What happened with our investment program during this period to help uh, that helped out? Our investment program at the college has been uh, a, a good program. We have invested our excess funds on a daily basis, keeping all of our money earning some type of interest return. Uh, this 
the the year of 1990, uh, the summer of 1990, was the was the year that we exceeded over a million dollars in earnings from our investment program. This was the first time our college had earned over a million dollars in our investment program, a significant boost to the college. We were then able to use that money to help us again meet our tremendous growth problems and, and it gave us a little flexibility to do some of the things we needed to do to handle this tremendous enrollment growth. About this same time, a joint venture began between the college and Union Pacific. Can you describe how that developed and, and grew? Yes, at the time I was appointed interim president, there had been some conversations about working out a partnership with Union Pacific. The college had been doing a considerable amount of training for Union Pacific uh, and some of their programs. A good relationship had developed between the college and, and the administration of the Union Pacific people, particularly those involved in, in their training programs. They came to us and expressed an interest in a joint venture with the college to build a building in which they would occupy part of the building and we would occupy the other part of the building. This caught my attention as being something very worthwhile, although it had never occurred in the state of Utah. Uh, this was something unique to the higher education system, particularly community colleges. We met with the Union Pacific uh, uh, officials a number of times, and I could see that they were in earnest. We knew that we were in earnest, and so I felt it was necessary then at that time to, to make this known to the State Board of Regents. Up to this time, it had just been a conversation between the college and the Union Pacific. But now I, I became desirous to make this known to the Board of Regents and to our Board of Trustees and see if they approved of this type of joint venture. I met with the Executive Committee of our Board of Trustees. They liked the program and gave permission to proceed and continue our conversations. I then went to the Commissioner's office and explained this to Commissioner Rolf Kerr. We jointly decided it was time to take this type of program to the State Board of Regents to see if they too would approve of this type of venture. So Commissioner Kerr called an executive session of the Board of Regents and invited me to come before that executive committee and explain to them exactly what was happening with our Union Pacific relationship. I explained to them that we were desirous of, of entering into a joint venture with them, build a building on the Redwood Road campus of Salt Lake Community College, that they would occupy approximately a third of that building for their training programs, we would occupy the other two-thirds for our college programs. Members of the State Board of Regents uh, expressed their interest in this program and decided to take it to a vote, in, even though it was a, a, uh, an executive session of the Regents, they wanted to have the expression of unanimity, unanimous opinion of the, of the uh, oh, let's back that up and leave that part out, that was, uh, that was a bad one. I think this pencil clicking is, is hindering the sound. Is it? And it is pretty loud, but I is didn't it? want to. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. We took the program, the venture, this joint venture, to the Board of Regents in an executive session. It was explained to them. The Regents liked what they heard. We then uh, were given approval to continue our conversation with Union Pacific and, and were encouraged to do what was necessary to bring this partnership about. We felt good about that decision with the, with, from the Board of Regents, and so we returned from that meeting with a greater amount of enthusiasm to continue our conversation with Union Pacific. We have done so, and it has proven to be a very successful partnership. The building is now under construction and will be fin finished in months to come and will be a great, uh, a great asset to this college over the years, future years. The college purchased what was South High School. Can you 
explain how all that came about and, and what was required to raise that to a college level facility? Yes, uh, the Old South High School located on 17th South State uh, became available for our use if we desired to, to uh, purchase the building from the Salt Lake School District. We, we took that uh, invitation to look at the building to see if it had use for us under consideration. President Cornahan was president at the time, but he assigned me that responsibility to, to be the liaison between the Salt Lake School District and the uh, a building board, the state building board, to see if there was some value in, in the college owning that building. We investigated the values, we negotiated the price, uh, an acceptable price was agreed to by the college, by the state building board, and by the Salt Lake School District, and a negotiated price of one million dollars was arrived at to purchase the Old South High School. We then, of course, needed to, to remodel that building. It was in poor condition, it was in rundown condition. The school district had, had anticipated abandoning the building anyway and had failed to keep up the uh, the infrastructure of the building. So much work was needed. Uh, we had been given some eight million dollars to build a second phase of the business building here on the Redwood Road campus. It was decided to take that eight million dollars, combine it with another two to three million dollars of money that had been appropriated to remodel the Riverside campus for skill center use, combine those two amounts of money and remodel the old South High School and then move the skill center from the Riverside campus to what we now know as the South City campus on 17th South State Street. So we commenced remodeling immediately. This was approved by the various interested parties. We started remodeling immediately and, and that has not turned out to be a very, very lovely facility housing both the Skill Center and many of the college's uh, other programs. Will you explain the meaning and purpose of the QSP concept? Back when the college was starting into its high growth mode and we knew that the college was going to continue to grow at a, a, an unprecedented level, we became concerned about maintaining quality in the classroom and quality outside of the classroom. We became concerned about maintaining the excellent standards of service that we had provided to the community and to our, to our students. And we also uh, became very conscious of the fact that we were underfunded. We were taking on more students than we were really being provided funding for by the state legislature. So that presented us with a real challenge. How could we maintain our high standard of quality, provide adequate and good service, and yet be productive being in an unfunded uh, situation like we were? We considered those things, quality, service, and productivity, which if you take the first letter of each one of those words, you have QSP, which stands literally for quality, service, and productivity. And so we initiated a program at that time which would be somewhat of a college philosophy. Let's maintain our quality, let's not deteriorate our service, and let's be more productive and get more from the dollars we're being appropriated and do a better job. Hence the philosophy QSP started its, its inroads into the Salt Lake Community College. I understand you were concerned about the numbers of potential students and families making just enough money and income to render them unable to qualify for federal funding and financial aid. Uh, at this time you implemented a program called SIP or the Student Installment Payment Plan. How did this work out? This is a plan that we put into place about this period of time while serving as interim president to help those students who wanted to enroll but didn't have enough cash to pay their tuition 
on the first day of school or during the registration time. We talked with some of our students and asked them what it was they needed to help them so that they could enroll and yet meet their financial obligations. Many students stated to us that if they could have an extra 30 days, uh, giving them a chance to earn just a little bit more income personally, they could come back and then meet their full requirements and pay their tuition. So we instigated what is called the SIP program, the Student Installment Loan Program. And we made available to our students a 30 and or 60 day payback for their tuition. At the end of a maximum of 60 days, all the tuition must be paid. This has proven to be a very successful program. It started small, but as soon as word was out that the students could do this, many students took advantage of this, and now it's a multi-million dollar program today, and yet we have very little loss from this program. The students do meet their obligations to pay their bills, and we found it to be a very successful program. Were any new facilities brought online during your administration? Not, uh, not finished and, and put into to, uh, use. There are many facilities that were planned uh, at this time. Planning is, uh, is a, for buildings at least, is a long-term program. It's not something that you can plan and, and bring to pass in a matter of a few months. It takes many, many months, sometimes years, to bring to pass a, a, a construction of a new building. But we did have our library well planned. We had our library funding request underway. Uh, uh, and, and construction of our library did start shortly after uh, the 1991 legislative session in which we received our funding for that program. We also received planning money for this building we, the, for our, our joint venture with Union Pacific. Uh, uh, the legislature uh, listened to our, our joint venture with Union Pacific that upcoming session. They too like what they heard and appropriated some forty to forty five thousand dollars for us to plan that building. So that planning was started right after the, the 1991 session. It gave us a shot in the arm to have about that much money to start the program planning of that building with Union Pacific. I can't think of any other uh, major projects other than the continuation of the remodel of South High, of course, and that was about a $11, $12 million project. When did the uh, Applied Technology Center come into the picture? We had a building on campus called our Metal Trades Building, and it was during this period of time that uh, the college wanted to let the community and, and the school district know that we really have an applied technology center on this campus. We are the Valley designated applied technology center, but we never officially had a, a place to house those students involved in the applied technology training. So it, during this interim period of time, we changed the name of the Metals Trades Building to the Applied Technology Center. And it was my privilege to have the opportunity to cut the ribbon that opened that building as the official Applied Technology Center at Salt Lake Community College, serving the Wasatch, Wasatch South Front District. Uh, that was a, a delightful day here at the college, a historical day. We had many of our downtown business people on campus. The governor was here. Uh, all participated in the ribbon, ribbon, ribbon cutting of that building. And uh, it was a day that we'd all looked forward to and had finally come to pass. That building today is still being used as the Applied Technology Center for the Wasatch South community. Why don't you flip over to page two? make any references there. Uh, what was our your associ 
What was your association with the former presidents of the college? I have fond memories of, uh, of the former presidents of this college. I, I, I have known them all personally. I've worked with them very closely with the exception of Mr. Gunderson, the first president. I did not know President Gunderson, but I became very well acquainted with President Jay Nelson. Uh, he and I spent many hours together over the years, and, and uh, we had a relationship that uh, was a good relationship. Uh, following President Nelson's retirement, uh, uh, President Kogel was appointed president. Uh, I became acquainted with President Kogel for the short period of time he was here, and our relationship developed into a solid, good relationship. I then became uh, uh, very well acquainted with President Carnahan, who followed President Kogel, and we spent many years together, uh, uh, working together, uh, I in the role of a, an educational analyst and he in the role of president of this institution. Uh, and it was through his, uh, while he was here as president, through his reign as president, that I left my employment as the legislative analyst for the state legislature and accepted employment here at Salt Lake Community College. How would you describe the transition from your role of interim president to the administration of President Butt? Oh, this was a this was a delightful experience. President Butt brought to the campus a, a wealth of of experience. Uh, he brought uh, uh, a lot of community college experience with him, and so the transition was very easy and very delightful. He he fit in quickly. Almost uh, the first day he arrived on campus, he he hit the payment running, so to speak, and. Uh, uh, I found him a delightful person to work with, and it was easy for me to fall back into the role of being business vice president, and, and uh, with the talent that President Butt has, it was easy for him to just take the reins of the college and continue on, and he's done so in a very delightful and a very progressive manner. For a Last question, what plans do you have now that retirement is so close at the Oh, you would ask that, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah, strike that from the record. <laughs> no plans. No, we're, we're through, I take it. Unless you have any other summary Jeez, statements. Like, how, how long have these been going? Uh, almost half an hour. Is that about what the others have taken, or do they take a lot longer? Of course, Jane Nelson will take a lot talk. longer. Uh, some people went on for two or three hours. On Zoom. Whoa. Uh, I think that was Carnahan. We have three tapes. Of Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Don't, don't compare yourself to another There's anything you. Well, I, of course, I couldn't do that because I wasn't here. There. I wasn't interim president that long. I don't have that much to talk about. Uh, what was the other? Jim Scher? Scher? Scher. He was. Uh, and then we, we yeah. were present for only uh, six to nine months, I think. Yeah, about the same length that he was. And yeah, I think he had a whole lot to say either, but uh, he knew something at least one team. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> but well, that's fine if you feel like you've Maybe we had to talk about going swimming and yeah. getting a dog. <laughs> and Some, something I would personally, if, you, if I'm allowed to put in the record, are there any anecdotes or any things, unusual things that happened? While you were while you were president, that you can remember happening. I mean, would you like to talk about those kinds? Of, do you remember anything happening during his uh, brief administration, or just while you were here at all? Uh, so we talk about just what the main challenges have been. Uh, is it personnel? Is it facilities? Yeah. Is it yeah. legislature? Uh, that would be interesting. Something like that. Well, the main challenge, you know, I thought, and I've kind of indicated that, is, is the growth challenge. Staffing, getting faculty aboard, getting staff here. Is that something you want to pick up? Sure. Uh, Talk about that a little bit. Very interesting. Uh, 
asking you, 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 wanna, you, wanna ask that you need question. a question to lead into uh, it, or are, you, are the questions to, really going to be cut? you could help him frame something in his mind, sure. But you're not going to use the questions. Um, we might. Go ahead and ask him a question. <laughs> Go ahead and ask him a question. Yeah, you don't know what they're going to use. <laughs> I see. Well, okay. It doesn't have to be stuffed shirts. Do no. you just need a drink before it. you? Yeah. Oh. Can you are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Are you in focus? <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Looking great, Hubert. Looking great. Well, this may be your next career. <laughs> Running a camera? Yeah. <laughs> On the front end. Uh, what would you, uh, what do you feel are the major challenges of the, the college spaces? The major challenge, of course, is the growth challenge. Uh, Sully Community College was in a growth mode uh, the year that I served as interim president. Uh, the year previous to that we'd grown, we were growing, moving into a rapid, uh, forecasted rapid growth the next year. Uh, just to manage that growth was a major challenge. The challenge of hiring faculty and, and making sure there were faculty, good faculty, not just bodies, but good quality faculty in the classroom was a major challenge. Uh, uh, it was during this period of time that we felt it essential to start nationwide searches for quality faculty. Uh, pretty much up until this time, the, the faculty, the new faculty coming to Salt Lake Community College came from, from the local community and from within state. But with this rapid growth and the number of faculty we were looking for and the and the expansion of, of our training programs, we needed to reach outside the state of Utah and, and look for quality faculty, faculty that could come into our classroom and keep the kind of quality that we would like in the classroom. So we started to go nationally uh, uh, for our faculty and, and that has continued and, and today we, we do advertise nationally for our faculty. That was a major challenge at the time. It's also a challenge to staff the college, to, to provide housing for these students, to make sure that there were classrooms available for them to attend. We brought onto the campus five or six portable classrooms to house our, our, our faculty and to house our students. These portables were meant to be temporary but they're still here today because the growth continues to, uh, to occur here at Salt Lake Community College. But we needed to bring on those temporary classrooms. We negotiated with, with the uh, uh, LDS Church Institute here on campus. They allowed us to hold some of our classes in their building, even though it was the, uh, the institute is not a college-owned building. They were kind enough to let us use some of their classrooms as overflow. And so we utilized the institute as well to house our students, and uh, uh, we rented property, uh, buildings off, off campus to house some of our classrooms and to house some of our students. Our, our uh, Sandy Center was growing very rapidly, and we had just completed uh, uh, a new structure at the Sandy Center in which to house our students, and this was expanded and we rented more classrooms even in the shopping mall in which our Sandy Center is located to, to house some of our students. These were major challenges. Staffing, faculty, staffing, non-faculty, facilities, buildings, classrooms. These were the challenges we had during this important time of our growth period. It sounds like parking might even have been a problem. Parking is always a problem on any campus in the state of the Union. <laughs> uh, parking is a problem at Salt Lake Community College. Uh, it's not as big a problem as many students and faculty make it out to be, but we, we've had to build parking lots. We've had to expand our parking facilities. We are a commuter campus. We do not have dormitories. We do not have housing for our students. Our students live at home, and most of our students work. The biggest majority of our students work part-time to even full-time in order to maintain their families and their livelihood and, and themselves and also attend college uh, 
pay their tuition and and struggle to uh, to upgrade their personal lifestyle. Uh, most students drive to our campus. They drive automobiles, and those automobiles have to be parked while they're in class. And so we have had to expand our parking, and have done so. Uh, uh, we've pulled uh, most of our parking from off the streets and out of the neighborhoods because we have built enough park on-campus parking facilities so that our students do not have to to uh, park their cars on streets and throughout the neighborhood, and this has helped a great deal. Has the athletic program uh, grown or improved while you've been here? Yes, the athletic program was established uh, uh, before my my term as interim president and and was well on its way uh, although in terms of longevity uh, athletics at Salt Lake Community College is young it's still young even today but uh, back in 1990-91 the program was even uh, in its infancy and uh, though our athletic program met with some problems as any new program often a new program will uh, we solved those problems uh, through good administration and through good uh, the watchful eye of those working in student services those problems were solved and the athletic program has continued to grow with the acquisition of, of the South uh, the old South High School and turning it into a, a, a community college campus that provided uh, for us a gymnasium up to, up to this time, our ball games uh, were being played in rented gyms around the valley. We would rent a high school gym one week and play our games there and then move to another high school the next week. And so our team really didn't have a central place to practice nor a central place to play their games. But with the purchase of South High School, this gave, gave us a, uh, a home for our Bruins. And this enhanced our athletic program tremendously. We were able to do better recruiting. We had a showpiece. We had something to tell. Our ball teams felt uh, more at ease practicing and playing on a court, the same court week in and week out. And that helped us athletically. It helped us competitively. And our athletic program, as a result of that purchase of South High and that new gymnasium, has now grown into a very solid program. Can you describe your relationship with your successor at the Legislative Analyst's Office? Well, I, I, having left the Analyst's Office to come to Salt Lake Community College, I of course left behind uh, some good friends. We're still good friends. Uh, I just play a different role today than I did uh, back when I worked at the Capitol. Uh, but our friendship has continued. I feel comfortable. In going to the Capitol, I feel comfortable in talking with legislators. I felt extremely comfortable in talking with legislators the year that I served as interim president. I knew most of them personally. Most of them knew me personally because I had worked for them. And, and they knew me and I knew them. And this helped. I think this relationship helped as we prepared our budget that year and was one of the reasons why we were so successful in obtaining almost $5 million for our student growth uh, because our relationship with the legislature was extremely good and uh, 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 with the legislative analysts they listened to us they understood our problems as it was with the governor I knew Governor Bangeter well uh, he had served as a legislator himself previous to his his running for governor and winning the governor's seat so Governor Bangerter knew me, and I knew Governor Bangerter, and we had a good relationship together during that period of time. Hey, that was pretty. That was pretty good. Was all right. Yeah. Anything else you want to review? I'm about run out. I've about run out. Do we get a chance to critique this thing? <laughs> Oh, I, <laughs> I think we're at least entitled to be able to critique it, <laughs> correct our words, our stammering, and our humming. And sure, our we'll to see this. <laughs> this is fun. This is great. Okay. 
This is for me. How is it over there? I thought you were going to be on the camera with me. <laughs> oh, this was this fine. Side by side. <laughs> well, all right. I relaxed a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can see Sit you over there. here. Okay. Thank you. Well, if we get a chance to take it, it would be helpful. <laughs> Where did Morgan go off? I'm going to be on her. Did she? Did she go? She was watching this right here. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Get us all out of, out of the way. Yeah, your name is Bruce?